Today, we're taking a look at all of the XXL freshman lists from the past decade, from 2010 to 2020. And we're gonna rank them in a tier list. Let's do it. My name is Patrick CC, and only hydrated individuals are allowed to watch this video, so just keep that in mind. Actually, the only rule that I have for this list is keep in mind, the way we're ranking them is by the whole group. So you can't just be like, oh, because Kendrick was in it, it's S tier. No, no, no. We're talking about the whole list as a group. 2010 was actually a really huge list. I mean, there's so many artists on here. We got J. Cole, Nipsey Hussle, Wiz Khalifa, OJ the Juice Man, Freddie Gibbs, Big Sean, J-Rock, and Fashawn Donis. Not gonna lie, don't know who Fashawn Donis is. However, Freddie Gibbs, awesome. Big Sean, I mean, nowadays it's kind of like whatever, but he had a really hot moment for actually a long time. J-Rock, awesome. J. Cole, of course, legend. Nipsey, R.I.P. I was actually a big Nipsey fan before he even passed away. I remember listening to Nipsey's mixtapes as a young kid. Wiz Khalifa also was very, very crucial to my high school years. And OJ the Juice Man is kind of just like a forgotten, <laughs> a forgotten character, we'll say. But overall, I think this list is actually really good. Not the best, I don't think that they've ever done, but much deserving of an A tier. 2010. Got some legends in there. A lot of people that really had a long career and are still relevant. All right, 2011. We got Meek Mill, Big Crit, Sci High the Prince, Lil Twist, Yellow Wolf, Fred the Godson, Mac Miller, YG, Lil B, Kendrick Lamar, and Diggy Simmons. Diggy Simmons? <laughs> Bro, come on, Diggy? Kendrick and Mac on the same one? Dang. You got Lil B, internet legend, the bass god. You got YG who, kind of had like in the middle of his career, just sort of, I don't want to say fell off, but just kind of was like in the background and has been more in the mainstream, I feel like in the past year, year and a half. So good on him for uh, staying on top of things. Fred the Godson, again, don't know who that is. Big Crit is an amazing artist and I love Dirty South rap and I feel like he has that energy and that flavor. Meek Mill, I mean, I never really was a big Meek Mill fan. I guess I respect him, but. Kind of dismissible for me. Sci High the Prince has actually been a trending topic recently because people just found out that he basically wrote most of the songs on Travis Scott's Astro World, which is not surprising to me. Sci High is a great rapper. There was one mixtape that I can't remember the name of, so I'll put it on the screen right here that I used to listen to back in high school that I loved a lot. This list, again, is awesome. Couple of stains in there. I mean, Diggy Simmons, eh. Lil Twist didn't really make out to be what Lil Wayne thought he was going to be. And Yellow Wolf, I mean, he's a cool lyricist, but like, honestly though, I think it's an A tier. Solid A tier. All right, 2012. Future. Ooh. <laughs> Kid Ink, Danny Brown, French Montana, Macklemore, Don Tripp, Machine Gun Kelly, Hobson, Iggy, and Roscoe Dash. First of all, Iggy Azalea. Get out of here. Roscoe Dash did not live up to the hype. Let's be honest. Waka Flocka was the best part on No Hands. <laughs> you know, I got respect for Hobson, but I feel like, I don't know. He started off in the industry on the wrong foot. Machine Gun Kelly, you know, he's been able to salvage his career. I think the Rap Devil disc helped him a lot, but I think at one point I was an MGK fan, but not so much anymore. Don Tripp, eh. Macklemore didn't deserve the Grammy. I mean, come on, no, there's just no way. French Montana, he's just in songs. Danny Brown, awesome, legend. Kid Ink, didn't, I mean, what was the song? Drank in my cup, and then that's it. Bronson, Kirko Bangs, Travis Scott, wait a minute, Kirko Bangs did drink, drank in my cup. Wait, what did Kid Ink do then? Bro, I'm gonna keep it a stack. I know who Kid Ink is, but I can't even think of a song by Kid Ink. Bruh, in my head, they're the same person. <laughs> and Future, absolute legend, absolute goat. But as a whole, this list is actually pretty bad. I'm gonna give 2012 the E tier. I don't think that it's the worst, although I'm not familiar with all of these lists, but maybe we'll have to shift it. But I think E tier is very fair. And I hate to say that because I love Future, but that list is trash. <laughs> So with 2013 right off the bat, I hate it because it says best ever. Like, come on, don't do that. <laughs> we got Schoolboy Q, Trinidad Dream, Tr Trinidad Dreams, 
Trinidad James, Joey Badass, Absol, Logic, Action Bronson, Kirko Bangs, Travis Scott, Dizzy Wright, Angel Hayes. Wow, this list is honestly pretty fire. Dang, Travis was on this, but it still feel like 2015 was really Travis's year. Schoolboy Q, I feel like is just a really solid artist all the way down the line. He stays pretty low key these days, but he had a nice little run. He's just a good artist. Like that's a really good way to describe him. Trinidad James, he did really only have one hit. Nah, Trinidad James is fire, bro. <laughs> Joey Badass, amazing lyricist, definitely um, born in the wrong generation for sure. Absol, so good. So slept on. Other than Kendrick, easily my favorite member of TDE. Logic, I mean, I was a huge Logic fan in 2013. I'll say that. <laughs> but these days, not so much. Action Bronson, again, great lyricist. Kirko Bangs is the same person as Kid Ink. <laughs> Travis Scott really evolved into an iconic artist. Dizzy Wright was a cool lyricist, was a cool artist. I feel like he didn't really live up to the potential that he had. And Angel Hayes, I don't even know who that is. But this list, definitely really fire. I don't think it's as good as 2010 and 2011, so we're gonna give it a solid B tier. 2014, the year I graduated high school. Chance the Rapper, Rich Homie Kwan, Isaiah Rashad, Ty Dolla Sign, Lil Durk, Kevin Gates, Troy Ave, Vic Menza, Lil Bibby, John Connor, Jaron Benton, August Alcina. I mean, there's a few good artists in here, but as a whole, this one was kind of an L. I mean, Chance the Rapper, Acid Rap was cool, but I can't really get into anything after that personally. Rich Homie Kwan totally fumbled the bag. And I'm not saying it's his fault, it just, it just didn't really end up being that big for him. Isaiah Rashad is for sure really dope and kind of one of those artists that I feel like is a little slept down in like the mainstream audience, but it makes sense because he's just like a more lyrically inclined artist, which is just not that popping right now, but he's awesome. Ty Dolla Sign, I never really got into it, even the even the club songs, but he seems to be like that go-to guy that's always gonna like be on the feature of like a new club track. He never really did it for me. Lil Durk has come a long way, man. Uh, shout out to Drake for getting him on the feature. He really just like got put in front of like all those like very, very loosely like rap fans. And I feel like Lil Durk has been a solid artist like his whole career since he's been relevant. I guess his mainstream appeal has really been flourishing, I'll say, in the past like year, two years. Dirk has really come a long way. I don't know. It's just it's just awesome to see him win. Kevin Gates, ultra fire. Troy Ave, honestly, I'm pretty sure he got into some legal stuff. Didn't he go to jail or something? But Troy Ave could have been a lot bigger for New York. And I was really feeling Troy Ave when he came out, but it's a shame. Again, just didn't really live up to the potential. Vic Menza, nah. <laughs> Lil Bibby ended up just not really being much of a, a person in the spotlight and rather somebody, you know, in the background. Just very much responsible for a lot of Juice World success and going to be responsible for the future of the Kid Leroy. So John Connor, not too familiar, gonna be honest. Jaron Benton, again, not too familiar. I know he's like kind of a lyrical guy. and. August Alcina, I don't really know either. But actually, now that I went through the list, I think it's a little bit better, but still as a whole, I feel like it's, you know, just kind of like middle of the road. I don't think it's worse than 2012, but <sighs> this one's tough to call. Again, I might move it, but mm, I'm gonna give it a C tier, but that's subject to change. <laughs> 2015, we got Rory. Fetty Wap, Dej Loaf, Vince Staples, K Camp, OG Mako, Shy Glizzy, Gold Link, Kid Kid, and Tink. Tink. So right off the bat, my first impression is this list is pretty bad. Fetty Wap, legend. Shout out to New Jersey. That's where I'm from. I still feel like Fetty Wap could come back and like make really fire music and make hits if he wanted to. Dej Loaf, I personally love Dej Loaf. I don't think that she's slept on or underrated, but I think that maybe people don't pay attention to her as much now. And honestly, I don't even really know. I don't even pay attention to her as much now. And I should, because I really love her music. Vince Staples, I respect him. I personally was never into the music too much. And I know that there's a lot of hip hop people that are gonna not like me for that in the comments, and I understand. And I think that I should pay attention to him more and I should have paid attention to him more, but I'm just gonna be honest and say that I never did. K-Camp, come on. It's 
OG Mac is a really good guy. And he honestly is a trendsetter for like the type of music that is made even today, or he was before his time, honestly, with this trap stuff. Didn't really live out to his potential. Shy Glizzy, eh. Gold Link is five. I'm gonna leave it there. Gold Link is just five. <laughs> and then I don't know who Tink is, but like as a group, it doesn't feel like this represented 2015 that well, but maybe I just remember 2015 differently. Yeah, I'm gonna go F tier. That might be a bold statement. Let me look at it again. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and say the 2015 freshman list was the worst one. 2016, man. This one was legendary. This one was legendary. We got Yachty. We got Designer. We got Dave East. We got Denzel Curry, G Herbo, Lil Uzi, Lil Dicky, Anderson Pack, 21 Savage, Kodak Black. This one is stacked, boy. Oh man, dude. I don't even really need to cover it, honestly. Designer is the only one, and you might be able to argue Dave East, but like Designer is really the only one who like fell off. And Dave East didn't even like fall off. He just never really was like anywhere on the level of like Uzi and Yachty. Like Uzi, Yachty, Kodak 21 were absolutely taking over the spotlight in this time. Um, Anderson Pack is fucking, if you don't listen to Anderson Pack or you have never heard of him, like, just watch his tiny desk and you'll be like, damn, this man is the most talented musician ever. <laughs> Lil Dicky, I got respect for Lil Dicky. Of course he's corny and stuff, but like G Herbo, Chicago legend. People are never gonna forget that. They're never gonna forget that cypher. It was so legendary. These dudes legitimately were the new era of rap. Like it changed, they changed the game. For No doubt about, no argument. They changed it and they're still some of the best representations of the new era of rap, still. Honestly, I wanna go deeper and I could really argue all day on how 2016 is just legendary, but I think a lot of you guys agree with me. But this is S tier, bruh. It's S tier, that's it. It's S tier. 2017, the follow up to the best year ever in freshman list history, or the best compilation of artists. Remember that. It's just a compilation of artists, not necessarily individually. The best representation of the year. Kamaya, A Boogie, PMB Rock, X, Playboy Cardi, Made in Tokyo, Amine, which is that the way that you say it? I don't even know how to say it. Ugly God, Cap G, and Kyle. So this list, very solid list. I don't know Kamaya. Uh, it's kind of a trend that I don't know a lot of the female artists, so I apologize. A Boogie, solid artist. I love New York artists and I never really got that much into A Boogie, but I still respect it. PMB Rock, I think he's a really good feature artist. I probably wouldn't go out of my way and listen to him, but I do enjoy when he's on a track. Um, X, RIP man, like seriously, still one of my favorites. Cardi, come on bro, drop the album. What are you doing? Made in Tokyo, I feel like one of the most slept on innovators in the modern trap sound. Amine, Super fire, just really artistic, really talented, not really gonna get a bad song out of him. Ugly God, I feel like didn't live up to his full potential, but he's not done yet. Cap G, you know, Kyle, kind of makes music for 13 year olds. I think this this is a very solid list. Um, I don't think that it's better than 2010 or 2011. I think uh, I think B tier is, um, is a very reasonable, categorization okay first of all again we got clout stop don't do that who signed off on that whose decision was that i don't know but it's easily the worst thing best ever was terrible we got clout even worse <laughs> ski mask the slump god lil pump smoke perp jid steph london block boy jb ybn namir wi-fi's funeral trippy red a solid list I'll give it to you. Solid list. Ski Mask, fucking awesome. Not underrated, but also I feel like kind of underrated. Like I feel like the old school hip hop heads don't show love to Ski Mask enough because he's actually really an innovator. He's created so many original flows and he still continues to do it. He has awesome beats. He's unique. He's cool. He's fire. Like Ski Mask is dope. Lil Pump. We all had a Lil Pump song that we liked at the time. <laughs> Smoke Perp. I mean, he was actually bigger than Lil Pump for a moment when they were in the underground, but then he's not doing too well these days. J.I.D. Awesome. I feel like J.I.D. is even still just kind of getting started, but Steph Don, Blockboy JB, 
didn't really didn't really uh, live up to the full potential there. YBN Namir, not good. Wi-Fi's funeral is, I, it's honestly crazy that he got on the freshman list because Wi-Fi has just like always been just like a prevalent figure in the underground. I love Wi-Fi personally. I think he's really good, but I'm, so I'm not really surprised that he didn't like blow up. I wasn't a big Trippy Red fan and then I saw him in concert and it totally changed my mind. He's really talented and really good. I think that this is a pretty solid list. I'm kind of split down the middle. So I think for that case, you know, it earns a C tier. Not as good as 2017, but there's some solid artists in there that keep it alive. 2019, we got Blueface, Comethazine, Tierra Wack, DaBaby, Lil Mosey, Roddy Rich. YBN Corday, YK Osiris, Rico Nasty, Gunna, and Megan The Stallion. Well, it's easier to kind of rank the, the newer list because all of these people are bound to still be pretty relevant and they all kind of are. Blueface blew up as a meme, but you know, still very relevant. I feel like Comethazine is kind of a forgettable artist. I don't really see it going too much further. Tierra Whack, again, I don't pay attention too much. DaBaby, Watched him blow up. He's got one flow, but it doesn't matter because it's good. <laughs> Lil Mosey, not a huge fan of Lil Mosey, to be honest, but I'm not gonna lie, makes really catchy music and he's a hit maker, that's for sure. Roddy Rich, Roddy Rich for sure is my favorite on the list and I was a huge Roddy Rich fan before he blows up. And I specifically remember talking to somebody, I don't remember who it was. This person was saying that every season was the biggest that Roddy Rich was ever gonna be and he could never top that. And I was like, no way. There's no, like he is way too good to not top that. And when the box came out, I wanted to say to whoever this was in your face and I was right, but I don't, I don't even remember who I was talking to at that point. <laughs> Corday, the future, he's phenomenal. YK Osiris. Rico Nasty, very solid female artist. Feel like she's relatively underrated in the female rap community. Still, I think that maybe she just needs that hit, that Megan The Stallion hit, that Megan The Stallion's actually got a couple now, but not the biggest Gunna fan either, but I recognize, you know, that people love him and that he's a, he's a solid feature artist. As a whole, this list is pretty good. Like I said, obviously there's a, there's a bias because they're still all pretty relevant now and it's tough to really tell what their long-term impact is gonna be. It's definitely between A and B. I think I'm gonna leave it between A and B until we talk about this year's and then we'll make a decision. So it's between A and B. <laughs> 2020, the one that people are mad about. Well, people are mad every year. That's just, that's just how it goes. <laughs> um, you got Mulatto. Honestly, have never heard of her. Fivio Foreign, 24K Golden, Cowboy, Annalie Chapa, Lil Keed, Chica, Lil TJ, Baby Keem, Jack Harlow. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention Polo G. It's cut off in this picture. Also Rod Wave, my bad. God, I just missed over that one. So I think that generally speaking, the 2020 freshman list is a decent list. Rod Wave is phenomenal. He ain't going anywhere. Mulatto, don't know you. Fivio Foreign, only there because Pop passed, RIP, but is facts, come on. 24K Golden, I think is a really, really solid artist. And I think he got on here early, actually, but he's very good. And I think he has the potential to make hits. Polo G, not going anywhere, really solid artist. Love Polo G. Cowboy, I don't think that he necessarily deserved the spot on here, but I don't know. NLE Choppa, people know him. Notoriously not much of an NLE Choppa fan. Again, I understand that people like him. He's hype, but I don't know. Lil Keed. Chica is really good. I'm not gonna lie. Didn't really ever hear of her before this. She is a really dope lyricist and she's really talented. Lil TJ, one of my favorites. I don't know who I like more. Right now I like Polo G more, but until Polo G dropped his album, I liked Lil TJ more. And uh, Baby Keem is also really dope. I think he got on here a little bit early as well because he is gonna be awesome. I think there's a lot of potential for Baby Keem. And Jack Harlow. I mean, I like Jack Harlow a lot when he was coming up in the underground. It's a toss up for me for Jack Harlow. I just don't know where it's gonna go. I'm excited. I think he's got some challenges, but I don't know. In a weird way, I'm like kind of doubting him but I feel like he's the kind of guy where he's like an underdog. Dude, I feel like 2019 and 2020 are like a dead tie. I'm not sure what one is better. I really can't make a decision. Oh man, they're like the same. Like they're the same list. I swear, I can't pick what one is better. Like I really can't. I'm not making a decision. That's it. 
I'm copping out. Copping out. I don't care. I know you're mad. They're equally between, but like one of them has to be better. I don't know. Are they both A tier? I don't know. It's, it's really tough to say. They're between A and B. They might both be B. I feel like it's too close. It's too soon. It's too soon to say. I don't know. I know you guys are really going to be upset with me ending the video like that, but I just can't get myself to make a decision and you let me know if I'm whack for that or if it's justified and it's just too difficult to make a decision. But anyways, you guys will definitely let me know what you think in the comments. My name is Patrick CC. Hope you were hydrated while you're watching the video. Uh, it's time to go home and go to bed. <laughs> Peace.